Joining me today is Tanya Montella. She is a women's career coach. So because she's a women's career coach, we are going to be talking about the importance of taking ownership of your career. But before we get into the conversation, of course, I have to give Tanya a moment to shine and tell us more about yourself, anything you'd like us to know. And thank you so much for being here with me today. Take it away. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for having me. This is wonderful. Uh, so a moment for me to shine. I love that you do this because you're right. We don't do this enough. So mm. let's see. how Well, I do. <laughs> Uh, I have my my own business where I am offering career coaching services for women. I help women to either transition into a new career they've never held before and do so with clarity and confidence, or if they already are in their role and they're loving it and they want to level up, I provide mentorship and community to them to allow them to be able to do that. Uh, it's really my passion and my mission to just foster and develop confident women in the workplace. I feel like every company would be better off if they had more confident women just making their way to the top. And if they want to stay at the bottom, just crushing it there. So mm. that's really what I'm all about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love the intro. I love what you shared. And of course, you probably already have everybody's attention uh, because who doesn't want to level up? But before we get into all of that, um, I like to ask the question, the transition story. What was your journey like from employee to entrepreneur, from where you were to where you are now? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting you ask because I'm still in transition. Okay. <laughs> yes, I started my business uh, almost two years ago. Um, so in addition, it's funny because it's almost like, um, what is it, the hair club for men where they're like, I'm not just the, the CEO, right. I'm also the I'm client. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, because I, I career coach women, but I also am in it day to day. I still have my corporate job where I am a senior manager of a global sales enablement team. So I'm managing a, a full, fully staffed team um, across the globe from the U.S. to Dublin. Uh, I'm doing the thing every single day and then supporting women to help them to do the thing every single day as well. So I'm still in transition. Okay. You are essentially your side hustle. So you fit right in. I love it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So because you're still in transition, you're doing both managing, juggling, how, whatever word you want to use. What does it mean? Like when you say taking ownership of your career, talk to me about that and where that came from and being able to guide women through that. What is taking ownership about? Yeah. So this really stems from uh, me realizing that I wasn't doing that in my own career. Uh, basically, to summarize it, you know, throughout the past 18 plus years of my professional career, uh, starting out, I was always and still am, to be honest, a top performer. And so mm -hmm. early on, I would say early to mid career for me, um, promotions and salary increases and things like that just kind of came to me organically. Mm -hmm. So. I wasn't used to advocating for these things. I wasn't used to asking for these things. So I really didn't have that as a skill. So when it came to be that things were kind of plateauing for me and those opportunities and those advancements stopped coming naturally, I thought, what's going on? What? what, what <laughs> like, I'm not used to this. I'm used to continuing to level up and continuing to to shine. And so this plateau is, is foreign for me. And it was in that moment that I realized wow, no one's coming to help me. No one's coming to just give me these opportunities. No right, one's coming right. to teach me how to advocate for myself. And so if I want to continue on that path to continue growing in my career and evolving, I need to seek out the, the help for myself. I need to ask for help, seek out the resources, get mentorship, um, advocate for myself if I wanted a higher position. And really that's what I mean by taking ownership of your career. Okay. Um, and with that and, and identifying that you needed to take ownership, what was one of the first things you really did when you had that light bulb moment to really start taking ownership of your career? Mm. Great question. I started by just taking a moment to pause and think about what it is that I really wanted out of my mm. career. Right. I remember I was meeting with a, a CEO of a former company I was with one time and he asked, so what do you want to do in the next, you know, five five to seven years. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, honestly, I, I'm I'm just trying to do the best that I can do with what I'm given. I can't even think about what I want to do tomorrow. So right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was just so overworked and overwhelmed that I didn't 
have nor take the time to stop and think about what is it that Tanya actually wants? What do I aspire to be? Um, what do I want to achieve? Instead of just trying to just make it, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what is it that I actually want to strive for? So that was the very first step is just like taking a moment to, to figure that out. And that, of course, led me to pivoting into a new role, hence why I, I help women to transition careers. Um, and it led me down a number of different paths, pivoting careers, um, asking for role changes, for uh, advancement, for salary, and all those things. It just kind of unfolded after that, after, after I had that light bulb moment to say, I need to do this on my own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what would you say are some, knowing that you had to pause and really think about like what you wanted out of your career, because you'd spend like a good chunk of your day and day to day and your life in there. What was a challenge that you encountered or a, or was there any resistance, if you will, when you acknowledged that you had to do this? Yeah, I think the challenge came once I, once I realized what I wanted, the challenge then became, how do I ask for it? Because like mm -hmm. I said, I, I didn't have that skill. I hadn't needed to ask for it. It was just always given to me, which is such a privilege. So I recognized that like, okay, Tanya, yeah, <laughs> we get it. Yeah. But really, I, I mean, I didn't have that that skill. Um, my performance just kind of spoke for itself. And so these opportunities were given to me. So when it stopped happening at the company that I, I ultimately was at at that time, um, the question then became, how do I how do I ask for it? So, you know, I also had the bad habit of not seeking out help and guidance. So once I recognized what I wanted in my career in terms of answering that question, how do I ask for it? I just kind of prepared my talking points. I kind of just went for it. I didn't like, you know, tap a career coach or tap anybody else to say, oh, is this going to sound right? Is this going to land? It was really trial and error. Luckily, it worked out for me. You know, I got ultimately the the things that I wanted and transitioned careers and leveled up in each role that I, I stepped into. But um it was really just trial and error, I have to be honest. Yeah, okay, okay. So you're helping women to uh, take ownership of their careers or to level up or to identify what they want to do or where they can most leverage their skills in their, in their corporate jobs. And I know one of the things that would come up, and even speaking from when I was still in my nine to five, is... A, a sense of like complacency, like almost like you realize a glass ceiling kind of thing where you realize, okay, there is nowhere for me to go where mm -hmm. I am right now, but I'm so familiar with what I'm doing right now. And I love to, before we started recording, I was saying that I love to encourage um, my clients to leverage their, their nine to five to supplement their, their, their side hustles. But knowing that you're, there's a sense of complacency there, but you mm -hmm. want more. How are you? How do you help them to bridge the gap to get over that that complacency mm -hmm. to start mm -hmm. to level up? Yeah, I mean, well, typically it's it's a bit of a different conversation when I'm speaking with women because they are tired of that complacency, so they're they're prepared for the change. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to those who experience kind of the you know, you're comfortable in, in where you're at, uh, but you also feel like there's nowhere else to go. I feel like when that's the case, it's time to either go elsewhere or it's time to do something different within the same company. So it's always a question of, do I stay or do I go? And then it, maybe it's none of the above. Maybe it's, do I just do something different where I'm at? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It almost becomes a choice of three. Um, but but those are the kind of the different things that that women face, depending on if they're tired of the complacency or they recognize it. Uh, they're then faced with those three those three options. The three options. Okay. And so they want to level up. They reach out to you. They're working with you. You're a woman's career coach. Do you find typically it depends on the type of organization, if you will, that the woman works in or her role? Is there something that really influences her decision to, to reach out to you? Other than, yes, you want to level up, but you are there patterns with the type of people that you work with? I'm just curious now. Now I'm just in your business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I, I mean, 
it's funny because yes, there are patterns and the pattern that the pattern that I see is the pattern that I also experienced myself when I, the scenario I mentioned to you earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's really the pattern of just feeling stuck um, Mm -hmm. and, and feeling like you've waited so long that things have come to a head where you're now at the point where things have to change because Mm -hmm. again, you're either overworked, (laughs) undervalued, maybe it's both. Um, or, you know, you just feel like you've, you've hit that ceiling, like you said. So when you get to that point and you sit in that for so long, it becomes a pain point. And you then get to the point of almost desperation where you say something has to change because I'm so unhappy with where I'm at that now I'm going to seek the help of a coach or of a mentor or somebody like that. So that's typically the, the pattern that I see. And that's typically the point that women reach yeah. when they out to me. Uh, and it's familiar because that's where I've seen myself in the past as well. Yeah. And I wanted to ask that question because I know there are women listening who have been in a company for years and they're really good at their role or they might be high achievers, but they have gotten to that point now where what now? And I've even had people say to me that they're not necessarily interested in, because I work with aspiring entrepreneurs and they want to go from employee to entrepreneur, that whole entrepreneurship bit, but they don't necessarily want, or they're not interested in starting their own business. or they don't feel like they're meant to be an entrepreneur, but they're feeling stuck, as you said, in, in their, their corporate job and their nine to five. So I wanted to really ask that question and get curious because I know many women, I've, I've even had some people say, oh, I wish I had a side hustle, but of course they won't start their own. And that's probably another story. It's another um, conversation for a whole other day because yeah. I feel like we can all do something, right? But that's just me being the, the side hustle success coach that I am. Yeah. What would you say, how does a woman know that she has made the right choice when she's going through trying to decide if to switch roles or switch companies or really kind of leveraging her skills or does she, is it, is there a SWOT analysis that I love talking about SWOT analysis, even though I've left corporate so many years, it's it's such a a useful, a handy tool. Mm -hmm. Is there a SWOT analysis? Does, does there, I'm asking so many questions, but I'm going to, I'm going to hold back (laughs) because there's identifying like when they kind of made the right decision. And then also the actual transition between the careers, if you help them with that as well, and what that looks like, what mm-hmm. is the journey of you working with someone that's like, Tanya, I've been in this company for 20 years and there's nowhere else for me to go. And like, I know I can be earning a lot more and I'm seeing all these young bucks coming in and they're getting hired and they're getting the opportunities and I'm tired of it. But I just, mm-hmm. I don't know, man, like I've been here for so long. Like, what do I do? What do I do? Where do I go next? How to help Tanya? I'll create yeah. a scenario for you. Okay. So walk me <laughs> through it. <laughs> yeah. So I think that there's a two part question there. So I'll, mm. I'll answer first part, which is um, how do they know when they've made the right decision? And aside from SWOT analyses, frameworks, things like that, I I go with the, the physical feeling in that when something seems exciting and scary at the same time, yes. that's usually a good indication that you're on your way for expansion and growth. So, you know, think about if somebody's like, well, what do you mean? Well, think about like when you're first dating somebody and you're like, oh, I'm excited, but also really, really nervous. I don't know what's going to happen. Like it's that. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. That I would say is a good indication that, you know, you're excited about something new. So there, you, your interest has been piqued by a different role or a different company, whichever it is. Um, but also you're nervous because it is change. But, you know, you don't you don't grow and you don't evolve when you just sit in that state of comfort. Right. So there's that part of the question. Mm-hmm. The second the second part of your question, I think, was what's the experience? Right. You asked yes. kind of like, where do yeah. we go? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, what's interesting about what you mentioned, and I've seen this before, um, particularly in the scenario you gave, so I'll try and stick with that. Uh, When a woman has been in a role for a very long time, typically what happens is she is not familiar with what other roles she could step into. So it becomes the question, like you said, uh, you know, I know this is not what I want to do or what I want to continue doing, but I don't know what the hell I do want. (laughs) Right. Right. Yes, 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 yes. 
that. <laughs> so, so we go through an exercise to kind of dive into that. And, and you know, I break things down to kind of try and make it very simple for the, the individual. But what I enjoy most is like talking through it and getting deeper with the individual where we really uncover what interests them and not only what interests them, but what things that they're really good at. And this, of course, requires you to be both introspective, but then also look outside of yourself and ask ask the opinions of others, because often people will say things to us and we'll be like, oh, that thing? Yeah, no, that's just, that's nothing. I'm, oh, I'm good at that? No, not me. Right. <laughs> yeah. We brush it off. So uh, we go through that exercise of, of diving deep into all those things. And typically you come up with themes around, oh, well, typically the things that really excite me or things that, you know, after I'm done doing them, I feel very accomplished are things related to you know, maybe it's writing uh, or communicating or speaking. Maybe it's things like helping others, which is a very common thing because we're women, we're nurturers by nature. Uh, so then we drill deeper, like, okay, well, helping who and helping who with what? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, so, yeah. Right? Because I think the, the, uh, the different perspective that I bring to the table is because I've made, at this point, six career changes over the past 18 plus years. And you know, primarily within corporate. So I've sat in a bunch of different places within organizations and I've either held different roles or I've collaborated with these different roles. So it's easier for me to say, oh, that sounds like it aligns with something like this versus somebody who has kind of had their blinders on and been mm. in the role that they've been in and haven't really experienced much else to where they're unfortunately at the point where they're like, I don't know what's around me. I've been here <laughs> the entire time, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so that's, yeah. That's, Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. So, and you know what, as you, everything that you just said, of course, it, a lot of it does come back to mindset and a conditioning of like, well, I've been here. That was the other question. Guilt. Have you, have, do you have to navigate guilt with them as well? Do they feel like, well, I've been here for 20 years and oh my God, everyone relies on me and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the go-to, I created this process and mm -hmm. I'm going to, what are they going to do without me? Now, we know exactly what they're going to do without you. They'll be, <laughs> you'll be, they'll be fine. But, <laughs> but navigating that guilt, do you find that something, we come from a mindset um, approach, do you find that something that they have to navigate when they're going mm. through embracing this change? It's a great question. And this may or may not surprise you. I'm not sure what you're expecting me to say here, but <laughs> I, I have seen it, but I don't see it often. I'll be honest. Okay. And I, I think it's because when women come to me, they're at that point of desperation. They're like, I oh, need yeah. to, that this is not it. I need to do something different. I don't, it doesn't matter to me what they're going to do. I just know I need to do something different. So they're, they're more focused on that, less focused on what they're leaving behind, more focused on what they're moving towards. Okay. So by the time they come to you, it's really like they're solid, they're standing firm in their decision that I, I need a change and I need the support through that change. And, um, Tanya's a person on that note, segue. I love a good segue. Do you have anything coming up? Like how will women uh, know to reach out to you? When it's time to reach out to you? What it should say when they reach out to you? What's what's going on in your world? Yes. So a couple things come to mind. One is an open door to my membership. Um, it's called Corporate Mavens because again, the goal is to, to grow and nurture confident women in the corporate workspace. So um, that's where we have the sense of community and mentorship that I was mentioning earlier. Um, that is an open door. So people can connect with me that way. If again, they're looking to level up in the role that they hold today. Um, in addition to that, uh, in the coming year, I'm going to be leaning more into my keynote speaking. So mm -hmm. if, you know, women out there, you know, are in their corporate role and they feel like bringing somebody in like me to really kind of empower and help workshop things through, um, with the female employees at their company, or even maybe more specifically the black female employees at their company. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's an open invitation as well. Okay. And you know what? I see you every time you are on my feed, I'm like, this girl is somewhere speaking, you know, just spreading your, your sharing your expertise. So I, you're, you're busy and you're really, I love how you have tapped into that and mm. you recognize in yourself, what other women would need support with. And now you can leverage your own expertise to be able to help these women through that. So, okay. I think there've been a few nuggets 
that have uh, come up while we've been talking, but I ask everyone this question. So do you have a nugget to leave with our viewers slash listeners today, Tanya? Mm. So you did make me think of the quote that's behind me. So for those that are watching the video version of this, you can see that it says today only happens once. Uh, mm. But, and I think you can you can deduce what what is meant by that. But what mm. I'd rather share <laughs> for those that can't see me, even though I just disclosed to you what's on my wall, <laughs> <laughs> is just the reminder that you are so much more powerful and capable than you know. I think oftentimes, as it relates to the topic of taking ownership of our career, oftentimes we can feel stuck and held back by the parameters of the corporate, the corporation that we work for, by the hierarchy that is above us to make the decisions around, you know, how and which we move around the company. Uh, but the truth is, it's just a matter of identifying what it is that you truly want and having that sort of support and encouragement and practice, I would say, to get good at using your voice to get the thing that you want. So whether it be getting more help or resources, um, you know, getting getting the advancement that you're looking for, getting clear from your manager on what they want to see from you in order to give you a promotion, um, really thinking about it in that way and that you have a hand in where you move in the company or another company, uh, I think it's just a mindset shift that is important for people to hear. So that's what I would share with the listeners today. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tanya, for hanging with me today and uh, sharing your expertise and in reminding and encouraging women to just not sit in that place of stuckness, <laughs> that there is something, it doesn't matter how long you've been with a company, how good you are in the role, how much you might have contributed to the success of the, of the organization, that change is the only constant and you deserve so, so, so much more. So if you are not happy with where you are, you are not a tree. You do not have to stay where you are. Reach out to Tanya and and figure out how you can take ownership of your career. And thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate you sharing your time with me. Thank you.